In 1989, the world's first dual-deck VCR was introduced in the United States. Its maker, GoVideo, expected a dual-deck VCR to become as popular as a dual-deck audio cassette machine, and for the same reason, the ability to copy one tape to another with a touch of a button. This feature proved to be so controversial that it took GoVideo five years and a lawsuit to get its product to the market. In the early 1980s, two entrepreneurs from Scottsdale, Arizona, Arthur Dunlop and his partner Richard Lang, launched a video production company, Go Video. They shot local TV commercials, industrials and wedding videos. To speed up the operation, they built a full video editing suite inside a small Toyota van. They used several VCRs to assemble segments from multiple source tapes onto a single target tape. While doing so, they realized that using a single dual cassette VCR would simplify the job and would ensure better quality. They also realized that other consumers would appreciate an easy workflow to splice together their own videos, automate copies of movies and other tapes. So in 1984, they filed a patent for a dual deck VCR. A year later, they incorporated their business in Delaware under the name Opta Corporation. Go Video didn't have a capability to produce the dual deck VCR, so they had to find a manufacturer. Despite that the video tape recorder was invented in the United States, it was later refined by Japanese manufacturers who completely annihilated American consumer electronic companies. The only choice Go Video had was to ask a Japanese manufacturer to produce a machine, but the Japanese have been blocking the introduction of the dual deck VCR. In 1990, Dunlop testified before the Judiciary Committee of the House of Representatives. In his statement, he was livid about Japanese trade practices, namely how Japanese companies pull their patents and technology, fix prices, meet on a regular basis to decide what products Americans would be allowed to have, and collectively decide which companies in Japan would make the next new product for American household. Dunlop filed a lawsuit on 28 defendants, including top Japanese and Korean VCR makers and the Motion Picture Association of America, after he found out that the voluntary restraint agreement by Japanese companies not to manufacture dual-deck VCR and not to sell component parts was caused by the opposition of Motion Picture Association of America, which considered dual-deck VCR a tool for illegal copying of American motion pictures. By 1990, Go Video has settled its differences with MPAA by agreeing to obey copy protection scheme used on many pre-recorded movies and to prevent their duplication. Most of the other defendants entered monetary or other settlements. What is more, as part of a settlement in early 1989, Samsung Electronics agreed to build the dual deck VCR for Go Video. It is worth noting that a double-deck VCR was not as a groundbreaking idea as Go Video founders wanted everyone to believe. To strengthen their position, Go Video filed two dozen additional patents in the time span from 1987 through 1992. Go Video announced the VCR2 in 1989, priced at $995. It was more expensive than a pair of regular VCRs, but Go Video claimed that their product not only would simplify copying tapes, but would ensure the highest quality possible and would make the second, third, fourth generation copy indistinguishable to the original recording. The machine employed an Intel built chip, but I couldn't find what was its function. So if you have more information about this chip, please share in the comments. Samsung claims on its website that in 1990, Samsung succeeded in developing a dual-deck VCR for the first time in the world. It doesn't mention Go Video, but the blurry machine on the photo sports the same layout as the VCR2 and has the VCR2 mark. By the end of 1990s, Go Video lost both of its founders. Richard Lang left quite early in the late 1980s while Arthur and Dunlop left in the late 1990s. DVD, introduced in 1996, threatened VCR business, so Go Video had to diversify. In 2003, Dell Electronics started producing DVD and VHS combination units for Go Video. Go Video then sold the units to third party retailers, including Costco. In 2002, Opta Corporation, the owner of Go Video brand name, 
created a branch seemingly under the same name. In 2003, it created a subsidiary under the name OptiSystems LLC. The same year, OptiSystems LLC was purchased by Lotus Pacific Incorporated, a company which origins I couldn't reliably trace. In 2004, Lotus Pacific changed its name to Opto Corporation. 19% of stock of the new Opto Corporation was owned by TCL Industries Holdings. In 2005, Opto Systems LLC transferred its intellectual property to TCL Multimedia Technology Holdings Limited. The agreement between GoVideo and Daewoo fractured after, in August 2005, Daewoo Electronics America sued GoVideo for failing to pay to Daewoo of up to $5 million of GoVideo invoices. GoVideo in turn sued Daewoo, alleging that items supplied to GoVideo by Daewoo were, in a variety of ways, defective, unlicensed or counterfeit. In 2013, Daewoo sued Opta Corporation for actual and constructive fraudulent transfer, alter ego and successful liability to the debt. As recently as 2018, the lawsuit still was dragging on. Meanwhile, in 2006, GPX, a designer and manufacturer of consumer electronics, audio and video products, became the exclusive licensee for all existing Go Video products, including the dual deck format. Next year, GPX changed its name to Digital Products International and launched seven uh, products under Go Video brand. It seems that this was the last time GoVideo brand was used, as I couldn't find a more recent product carrying this name. In 2007, MPEG LA sued Opto Corporation and Opto Systems LLC, formerly doing business as GoVideo, for breach of license agreements. According to the complaint, Opto Systems LLC failed to report the manufacture and sale of MPEG 2 and 1394 royalty products and pay royalties as required by the contracts. It was further alleged that Opto Systems LLC's assets were transferred to Opto Corporation to avoid paying royalties. Oh well, enough of corporate machinations. To sum it up, Go Video started its history from lawsuits and ended it embroiled in other lawsuits. There is another interesting twist to Go Video's story. Remember its founders are Terran Dunlop and Richard Lang. Their children, Red Dunlop and Alicia Lang, work together at Sigilas Productions, a full-service video agency that produces corporate music and documentary videos. From a mobile video production shop to a dual deck VCR brand and back to video production. The circle has completed. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Goodbye.